Superstitious, but I am a little stitious. Barons win! Barons win! Cody Jansen stopped 92 out of 95 shots, including a penalty shot in overtime. Somehow he still only wound up the third star of the game. You like that? Jansen has a heart. Y'all smoked it, crack! Let's get it going Wednesday, World Hockey Report. Coming to you live from Alberta. It's Cody Jansen, World Hockey Report. We are presented. By Quack Stats, the most advanced player tracking technology in DraftKings. Use promo code THPN when signing up on DraftKings today. If you miss any of these conversations, you can download the podcast right after on the Hockey Podcast Network. Follow me on social media at Janner31 underscore and the show at World Hockey RPT on Twitter. Join anytime if you're watching on 12 Ounce Sports Facebook, Twitter, or Twitch, or the Hockey Podcast Network if you're watching on YouTube. There's a lot to get to here, but we're going to kick it off. We'll talk Minnesota Wild with Alex Micheletti, and then we got uh, Carolina Hurricanes forward Vinny Trochek coming up on the show. It's a short one today, so stay with us. It's World Hockey Report. What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Cody Jansen, World Hockey Report, coming to you live from the Pro Rock Broadcast Studios. Today, be sure to check out Quack Stats, the most advanced player tracking technology. And, of course, use promo code THPN on DraftKings. Joined now by Alex Micheletti. we got to talk the Minnesota Wild, man. They've dropped eight of their last ten. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I really thought uh, getting Matt Dumba back was going to be the elixir uh, you know, to solve all the problems, but but now the goaltending has, has gone wayward, and uh, that's, that's been a major issue. Uh, it was definitely a, a problem yesterday against the Stars. There was a, a couple of soft goals that were let up that, that shouldn't have been uh, in the net. And so, yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem right now is, uh, is the goaltending and also the penalty kill um, in power play have been dreadful. So, you know, special teams have been a major issue for the, for the Wild recently, too. So what's your solution in goal? Do you ride it out with Talbot and Kakadin? Do you make a move? Is there someone you're waiting on in the system? I want your opinion. Yeah, I think I think goaltending has got to be the top priority now. Um, you know, they don't they don't seem to want to call Marco Rossi, um, you know, for for center. So, you know, I I I I would try to see if there's a goaltender out there. You know, names that that kind of interest me would be. James Reimer, if he's if he can, you know, if he's if his injury is not long long term, or you know, um, you know, I, I really like Varlamov out out in uh, New York. Um, they don't seem to be to me uh, have a shot at the playoffs. So you know, I would try to check in with the Islanders and see if if he's available. He's a he's a solid veteran that's been in the league for a long time, and so I don't think it would take a lot to to get him here. Um, you know, people throw out Matt Murray too, but <laughs> he kind of worries me. He kind of seems to be in the same mold as the as the current Wild right now. But you know, those are a couple names. Um, yeah, I, I want nothing to do with Martin Jones. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, that's who I would try to target for sure. So what's changed with this team from the start of the year where yeah. it was a great start for Minnesota? We were talking about all the highs. We were talking about how they were leading the Central. What's changed outside of the goaltending from then till now? Yeah, uh, they've they ran into a couple of injuries, and that um, you know it's kind of thrown off the the lines here a little bit. Uh, you know, Zuccarello's been kind of in and out, uh, um, and then you know um, Jordan Greenway has been hurt, um, and I think I think that's been a, a you know you know big injury because um, the Greenway Felino Eck line. When they are 100% go, that's when the the Wild are at their best. Uh, 
you know, that line just grinds down teams. Um, and, you know, it's important uh, to have that line uh, because now they have um, two effective scoring lines. Um, you know, the, the offense hasn't been the issue. It's been the defense. But now with, with Matt Boldy paired up with uh, Fiala uh, and uh, you have Zuccarello with Kaprizov, that, those, you know, that's pretty pretty good uh, scoring lines. But, you know, with the, with the injuries, the lines have been kind of – out of whack a little bit. And so I think when they can get the full team together, uh, then, then we'll see a, a, you know, a a turnaround here for sure. What do you thought of Kaprizov's season so far? Again, another good start, kind of hit a little bit of bumps in the road. Yeah. It's, (laughs) uh, you know, um, a lot of people say this, like, uh, you know, he can, he can kind of disappear a little bit, but then, he'll have like a five point game or a four point game. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Uh, you know, it's, uh, him and Zuccarello together, are just phenomenal, that chemistry. Um, you know, and the, the one team, the one thing lacking for that line has been a consistent center. Um, and I don't know, I, I don't know if you can consider Ryan Hartman a number one center, but you know, that's what they have to go with right now. And so, you know, that I think, uh, you know, that's something that Billy Garen is, is definitely looking at too. Um, uh, he didn't seem, you know, before the skit, he didn't seem like a guy that wanted to make any type of big move, um, you know, cause he values, uh, the first round draft picks in, in all the prospects that they have, um, accumulated through the draft. And so, but, but, but with the skid, you know, they might have to try to, to get that number one center. And so a guy like, a guy like Tomas Hurdle, I think, would be the the number one dream. Yeah, you know, that to pair him between Zuccarello and Kaprizov would be would be something else that would make make it one of the best lines uh, in the league for sure. Join the conversation, Cody Jaynes, and talk in Minnesota Wild with Alex Micheletti right now on Twelve Ounce Sports, the Hockey Podcast Network. Let's talk about Addison on the back end. Have you been happy with his uh, progression here this year? Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting. He, uh, you know, they they've had when when Damba got hurt, uh, you know, they were playing Jordy Ben over him, uh, which which made no sense. Um, you know, he kind of, uh, you know, he kind of seems like the the Matt Dumba in waiting kind of a replacement. Uh, you know, they're similar similar type players, and you know, when he's been in there, uh, you know, he's he's been very good, and uh, you know, they they put him on the power play, and so. Um, you know, I think they're, you know, they're, 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 <laughs> they're trying to move him along slowly here. Um, and, you know, he's been in and out of the lineup. Uh, and now that Dumba's back, um, you know, he's either going to be the, you know, the seventh or eighth defenseman or, or back in Iowa. And so, um, you know, they're going to, it's going to be a big summer for the, for the wild here to see, um, you know, if, if they move Dumba, he, uh, you know, Addison's the, the clear re- replacement, um, or, you know, but if they decide, um, you know, to keep Dumba then, and then let, let Fiala walk, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Addison. Um, you know, Alex Goligoski only signed a, a one year, um, contract. And so, um, Addison could could re- 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 you know replace him you know full time in the in the lineup uh, next season too. But um, yeah, every time he's been in the lineup, he's he's um, he's been productive, and so um, uh, I'm very excited for for his future. I don't think you can let Fiala walk. Not with the way this team's shaped right now. You, you got to no. keep that offense intact. And, and of course, get yeah. healthy too. But, hey, what's this team's issue? Whenever they play a defensive-minded team like the Flames, they struggle. Does that, you know, first off, I guess, just why do you think that happens? And, two, does that worry you, worry you a little bit when it comes to playoff time and everything does get locked down a little bit more? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. You know, I I threw this out on Twitter that um, you know Sutter the this this Flames team is just set up exactly like his LA Kings Cup winning teams. Yeah. Um, they're bi- they're big. Uh, their defensemen, you know, are are, are really big too. Um, and you know, they have a phenomenal goaltender in, in Markstrom and and Lindholm is, is playing at a Selkie 
uh, award winner level. Um, you know, they, I, I also said that they, the flames have one of the, probably the top, top line in hockey right now with Kachuk and Goudreau in, uh, on the wings for, for Lindholm. And, uh, yeah, it's tough. Uh, they, they play really physical. They give you no space and, um, yeah, they, they frustrate a lot of teams. They see, you saw, you saw them the other night beat Colorado. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's something that, uh, the wild are, are, have not made an adjustment on, you know, they just lost to the flames twice. And so that's something they definitely have to get figured out. Um, you know, I, I think against the flames, um, you know, you know, the, the power, the penalty kill was, was awful. And so that's something that they would have to, you know, get, get straightened out to and, 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 and create some adjustments, uh, especially against, uh, against the top line like that. So. Hey, last one for you, Alex, you got to help out Oilers nations in a pretzel right now, fix Edmonton, however you can, <laughs> what's wrong with this team? Yeah, uh, they need a goalie. Um, yeah, uh, like you know, you saw the goal the other, you saw the you saw the goal the other night against uh, Chicago, where uh, Koskinen was behind the net and then just kind of left it completely open. And uh, I don't trust Mike Smith at all. I don't know why they continue to to resign him, but they 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 need a, a goalie desperately, like the Wild. It's going to be interesting to see because you know you would think you know, Mark Andre Fleury would, would, would be the perfect fit, but he doesn't want to leave Chicago, um, which I, I don't know why he wouldn't want to try to chase another ring. Um, but uh, yeah, they're going to be in that goal, goalie uh, mix too. They should reach out to, you know, San Jose with Reimer and, uh, and same with Varlamov. Um, <laughs> I'm sure, uh, you know, they'll check with Martin Jones too, but uh yeah, it's gonna uh, it's gonna be interesting. They, um, you know, that's that's what they need. They need a goaltender and they need another defenseman. I, I think too. Um, I, I don't like I don't like the decor other than Darnell Nurse. Uh, I've never been a huge Tyson Berry fan, and so I think they're they're missing uh, another defenseman too. Do you think? Okay, I said that was the last question, but I thought I got one more for you because you brought up the yeah, goaltending okay. again, and everyone needs a better goaltender. I'm not sure if that's the only right. fix. Like, if you put Mark Andre Fleury in Edmonton, I'm not convinced that, that that makes him a legitimate contender. But would you rather go into sure. playoffs and, and don't? Say, and we can't say Stuart Skinner's even an option right now. The way that the Oilers have run their systems, do you think Karel Vamelka? Right. And out of Arizona is an upgrade on Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen. Do you think he's a guy worth taking a flyer on right now? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, you know, he's shown that, uh, you know, he can shut down some, some teams and he makes a ton of saves. He saw him beat, uh, uh, you know, the Maple Leafs team, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago on national TV. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's worth it. <laughs> It's worth a flyer. It's you know, even average goaltending will you know yeah. would be better. I mean, some of the goals that both of them have given up, it's it's just demoralizing for for a team. And even uh, you know, even having the two best players in the world, uh, it's it's tough. Uh, it's tough when you're giving up you know three, four, five goals every game. Uh, um, you know, you know to to make comebacks, it's you know, it's difficult. And there's but so with the way the schedules are, there's so many back to backs now. And you, you've seen, uh, you know, a perfect example, uh, when, when Edmonton, uh, had to play the wild after playing a tough physical Winnipeg team and they got the, their doors blown off, blown off by, by the wild. And everybody thought the wild was, was okay at that point. Um, and then you, you, you saw the next game for Edmonton, they, they go out, um, and, uh, we're a lot better against, uh, Tampa Bay. Um, so it's, yeah, it's tough. Uh, you know, there's, um, there's going to be a lot of games in a short amount of time and you, you need that, uh, competent goaltending, especially in the playoffs that, you know, um, if you get a high goaltender, you, you know, you ride them all the way to, to a Stanley cup. Um, and so they're going to, they're going to need that, uh, you know, against, you know, some, you know, some really tough teams, uh, um, you know, out, out West, uh, you know, Colorado is going to be right there and, you know, Calgary probably has the best, best goalie out of the bunch. Um, and so, um, they're going to need to upgrade in, um, uh, in that for sure. And so it's worth a flyer taking a young guy like that. Alex, this has been a blast, buddy. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, you know, all the insight on the wild as well. Take care and we'll talk soon.
Yeah, uh, take care. Take care. Bye, Cody. Vinny Trocek is next on World Hockey Report. Hoops fans, the latest offer from DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, is too good to pass up. I'm talking between the legs, 360 windmill good. New customers can bet just $1 on any team and get $150 in free bets if they win. It's that simple. If the sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still take your shot at a big day payday. Everyone can play for huge cash prizes with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Basketball Contest. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. Bet just one dollar on any NBA team and get one hundred and fifty dollars in free bets if they win. That's promo code THPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Twenty-one plus. Minimum age and location requirements vary by jurisdiction. See DraftKings.com/sportsbook for full list of requirements and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Void where prohibited. Minimum five-dollar deposit. Gambling problem? Call one-eight hundred GAMBLER. In Tennessee, call the TN Red Line one 9789 In Connecticut, call triple eight seven eight nine quadruple seven or visit ccp.org/chat. In New York, call eight seven seven eight Hope and Y or text Hope and Y. Take your game to the next level with Pro Rock Hockey Sticks. Pro Rock is changing the way we buy top of the line twigs. They're lightweight, balanced, and provide the perfect kick point. Whether you're a pro hockey player or a beer league legend, Pro Rock Hockey Sticks are made for you. They're at a price point you can't beat, so check them out today at ProRock.com. Play like a Pro Rock. It's Cody Jansen with you on World Hockey Report. Be sure to go to DraftKings. Use promo code THP. And now joined by Carolina Hurricanes forward, Vinny Trocheck. Vinny, how are you doing? It's got to feel nice. The season kind of feels like we're back on track now after some of those COVID postponements and stuff earlier in the season. How are you feeling? I'm good, man. It's, uh, yeah, like you said, it is kind of nice to have a, a season that's back to normal scheduling and fans and everything for the most part. So uh, hopefully we were finally through this and we can get onward with, with a normal NHL. Okay, I got to ask the big question off the bat. What's, what's your history with Brad Marchand? Because, like, it, obviously it's a story that breaks the league, but it's also the personality that fans want to see. Fans are dying to see because it happens in other sports. And, and now all of a sudden you and Brad are getting into it on social media, and it makes the game that much more fun. <laughs> yeah, I, there's really no history. I mean, um, play against the each other for a while now and uh, similar style players get, get under each other's skin a little bit get pretty much the interview I got asked about our style of play it got taken a little bit out of context whenever people thought that I was calling him a rat which I mean at the end of the day kind of is a rat I, but that's the we have uh, game and obviously it's a phenomenal hockey player and does a lot a lot of great things for that team so uh, to be considered in the same conversation as him is something that I'm definitely not going to be mad at. Well, there's a little bit of backstory there. Well, hey, I mean, you know, you've played on two teams in your career in, in Florida and Carolina. Talk about the trade. I mean, that was a couple of years ago now. How, how's life in Carolina? But but also, I, I want you to walk people through, you know, what is that like getting traded away from your first team? Like, it's not like it's your third or fourth trade here. Like, that's the team that, you know, they, they really kind of built you into the player you are. And now you're competing against them and likely going to have to face them in playoffs to, you know, if you want a chance to go for a cup. 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little weird. I mean, I've spent seven and a half years in Florida. They drafted me. I came up through their system and everything. And um, all the guys on that team I, I kind of came up with. And obviously when you get traded, it's, it's tough to swallow, especially for the team that you were with for so long. But um, I, I was lucky enough that they all traded me to a team that I, I would mesh with well and uh, had a chance to win with a great coach like Roddy. So uh, it's been, the fit, fit here has been great for me. I, I think I fit in here really well. And, um, the transi- transition was pretty smooth from the time I got there. So um, it was a good good spot, even though it was a little tough leave in Florida. It, it, was, um, it all worked out in the end. What's it like? You, you brought up playing for Rod. What's it like playing for him now? It's awesome. He's a great coach. He's one of the best I've ever had, if not the best. And um, He demands a lot out of his players, but he does it uh, without that hard-ass attitude. And he just he demands respect. He just the way he shows his emotion and, and how you can see how badly he just wants to win wants us to win um, and obviously him playing 1500 plus games in the NHL he's earned he's earned that respect and the way he played back then is is kind of how he coaches he backs it up what's he like behind the scenes though like Vidi let's be real if he catches you like eating a donut or like crushing wings and beer one day what's he saying is he disappointed is he shaking his head at you no he <laughs> He doesn't care. He all he cares about is to show up whenever it's game time. So he's not he's not making you do two no, days he, if he sees you walk in with coffee and a donut in the morning. No, I mean you won't catch him with that, but he doesn't care as long as you show up game time. That's, that's fair. That's fair. All righty, Vinny Trotek, my guest here on World Hockey Report. It's Cody Jansen coming to you live from the Pro Rock Broadcast Studios. We, we got to talk about, you know, you guys play Florida in an intense game. Obviously, it doesn't end up going your way. But but how are you guys feeling about, you know, your, your chances to come out of the East this year? You guys got a wagon. You've got that playoff experience now. You know, d- does this feel like a special group to you that can go on a run? Yeah, definitely. I think we had a great team. We had great goal setting this year, which is something that we needed to, to kind of address this off season, which we did. Praise the phenomenal for us. Um, we got a lot of depth up front and on D. It's just a it's just a matter of kind of putting it all together and, and making sure that we're ready for a playoff run. And I think the second half of the season is kind of what we need to do. That we need to kind of gear ourselves up for that. Talk about some of those additions, and more so on the back end. You mentioned Freddie Anderson already, but even on the blue line, you know, you add Tony D, you add Ethan Bear. You know, d- does that kind of shape the team a little bit differently than you saw when you first arrived in Carolina? Like, is that kind of what's pushing you guys over the edge, do you think, come playoff time? Um, I think Tony's obviously been, he's been a phenomenal addition. Losing Dougie... Um, on the power play after last season, we needed somebody to come in and be that guy on the power play. And Tony's done just that and, and even more. He's playing great defensively as well. So he's done a phenomenal job for us. And, uh, we got Ethan and, and Ian Cole on the back end as well, doing doing a great job for us. And, and Brendan Smith too. Uh, all three of those guys are all contributing. So um, we're very deep on defense. I mean, we've been pretty deep on defense since I got here. We got. Uh, Great, great players on defense that, that kind of make our team what we are. They they bring the identity to our team. It's that hard to play against with hard to play against uh, core. So um, they've been great for us. I think our team kind of built a lot more deep. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun here to close it out. Vinny Trocek, let's, let's talk about 2013. You, you end up in Russia at the World Juniors, and you guys win gold. Like, what, what was the experience like? But also, like, are you guys allowed to party after that in Russia? Or are they just like, hey, just uh, hang out in the hotel room and we're flying you home tomorrow? It was great. I mean, obviously having a chance to play um, for Team USA, World Juniors, win a gold medal, it's that's something that you'll never forget, and it's a, it's a experience that I'll have with me for the rest of my life. It's it was a lot of fun, great hockey. Um, being in Russia, it was 
we didn't really get to do do much outside of the rink. It was kind of just to the rink, back to the hotel, and um, that was pretty much it. But we we were, we were able to have some fun at the same time after we won. A um, bunch of great guys on that team, so uh, we all enjoyed it. How cold was it there? Wasn't that the one where it was like freezing, like minus thirty five? Yeah, it was frigid. I mean, you're as close to Siberia as you can get up there, so it was uh, a lot of snow. It was freezing. Didn't leave the hotel much, so a little different. We didn't see too much of that. We were hotel, bus, rank, bus, hotel, and that's pretty much the extent of it. Little different than Florida, I guess. Hey, let's go back. What's your first NHL goal? Walk me through. How did it happen? Who was it on? Who was it against? <laughs> Funny story. Um, it was against New Jersey. Artie Brodeur was the goalie that game. Humble break. Um, but he just so happened to be on the bench when I scored my goal. So uh-huh. it was an empty netter. And, uh, that was my first against Yogs was on the, on the on the Devils at the time as well, chasing me down. But yeah, first goal was a was an empty netter. Not something that I brag about. Hey, I mean, you know, they, they all look the same on the stat sheet after the game. We'll we'll go with that. What was your welcome to the NHL moment? I guess let's let's go back one further. What was the moment when you're kind of just like, oh damn, this is the National League and I'm here. Uh, I think the first time I played Pittsburgh was my first year. Uh, in Pittsburgh and lining up against Sid was kind of that starstruck kind of moment whenever I grew up in Pittsburgh uh, watching him play. And um, that was kind of the first time I really, it really hit me a little bit. Not a bad player to be lined up against there. Okay, I, I got to ask because I, I remember the video from a while ago. Your first NHL scrap, it was against PK Subban, correct? <laughs> Yeah. You got to tell the story. How does this happen though? Like, like what, walk me through the shift that leads up to it. Cause weren't you two going at it for a while, just cross checking each other. And then all of a sudden you're just like, all right, well, I guess I'm getting in one. Yeah. He, he hit me. I think it was like, he hit me on the half wall after I got rid of the puck and I slashed him in the back of the leg and then he slashed me. And then before you know it, the gloves were dropped and we were both on the ice. A little bit of a sword fight. You've only had a couple, though, in the league. Like, you were scrapping in juniors, weren't you, a little bit? Like, you, you chucked him a few times in juniors and the minors. Yeah, I feel like everybody did in junior. I got in a few back then. I just have two in the NHL, though. That's fair. Okay, okay I need a funny story. Eddie, you know, what's, what's the best prank that's ever been pulled on you, and who did it? Oh, God. Let's see. I don't know, man. I honestly don't. You've never had a crazy. Any, like, you've never had a funny prank, prank pulled on you. I'm sure I've had a few. I none that like. Oh, none that stick out. Are you I'm pulling pranks at all at anyone pretty... or what? Am I with who? Are, are you pulling pranks at all on anyone or what? Occasionally, I, none. Nothing too crazy. I might, I pulled one this year on. Uh, I actually feel awful, but I felt terrible out about it afterwards. But um, Steve Lorenz hit me in the face in practice, and <laughs> so before he got off the ice, I I um, pulled his his bag out of his locker, packed up the rest of his stuff, tied his sticks together, uh, and put his name tag in his bag to make him think that he was getting traded. <laughs> Came off the ice, and he was very flustered. That's a good one. That That's a funny one, and I'm sure a lot of guys will, won't understand the whole, you know, uh, pack your stuff, you're heading on the bus. But, no, man, this has been awesome. Vinny, thank you so much. Best of luck the rest of the season, man. Hope to see you go on a playoff run, and we appreciate you taking the time. No problem, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Huge thanks to Vinny for taking the time here. It's Cody Jansen, World Hockey Report. We are coming to you live on 12 Ounce Sports and the Hockey Podcast Network. As well, thanks to Alex Micheletti for hopping on to talk Minnesota Wild. We give him a hard time, but come on, who wouldn't give them a hard time? It's the Minnesota Wild. They're struggling. We get to poke fun at the bear. Okay, that's going to do it. We're going to be back here next week. Same time, same place, everyone. Until then, be kind, be better.